going back to the model though, right? So, so you have the problem of every single country right now asking for different things. That's a given, right? And we were very familiar with that space. Secondly, even within a country, you have different frameworks. You have CRS, you have OTC derivatives, you have Basel, you have pr local prudential report. You have so many different flavors of uh, frameworks that are going out there. And even when there is an initiative, let's say, for instance, Anacredit, which we're familiar with too, yeah. where the whole intention was to have one standardized set of reports, within a couple of months or years, we're already seeing deviations for individual countries. So is it actually realistic? Does anyone think, or maybe I'll ask the crowd while we're at it, does anyone think that we can actually have a fully standardized data model globally? Does anyone think that's possible? Okay. Does anyone think it's not possible? All right. Okay, that's the vast majority. So that, that I think is quite... But I think hurdle. my question back to you would be, why do we need a fully standardized global data model? Because with AI becoming more powerful and being able to deal with you know, different data models, why does it have to be structured globally? Why can it just be an unstructured and semi-structured data lake? And that's a very good question to, to, to everybody here as well. Why is that's one end of the spectrum, fully standardized. What if actually we no longer require standardized submissions and, and now we're jumping already to big data, but you know, let's say regulators go straight into their data sources and start analyzing those data and start processing it. Do you think that's a reality that may come our way? Well, a reality in the future for sure. Now the question is, will, will it be by 2025? Um, even if you do that, you will still need some sort of common ontology to, to map to, right? Because otherwise there is just no reference. So yes, we can probably skip the fully unified model, agreed, but we still need to at least adopt some common ontology and to map your own data structures and even unstructured data to that ontology. Would you agree with that? We, we talked about big data before, especially in the regulatory context and regulators collecting more and more data from different sources and different form. Right now it's relatively structured. They uh, prescribe the data model. They tell you how you have to report it. They, they control the environment and the data stores. We haven't really spoken about supervisory technology yet, which is the second topic of, yep. of this uh, panel. Go ahead. What should regulators do with all of the data? My suspicion is that when I think of CRS, for example, the common reporting centers and tax, or I think of the trade reporting obligations we had to implement over the past few years for OTC derivatives. That's now all coming to the regulators, but what do they do with this data? How do they use it to actually regulate the industry as such? Do they use predictive analytics to maybe already anticipate future financial crises? I hope they do, but it would be interesting you know, to, to get uh, a viewpoint from one of the regulators. I have not seen anything in the market, but I'm pretty sure that there are tendencies among the regulators to, to start using predictive analytics to really not just detect crises when they've already happened, but use all of this data that they're now collecting to actually predict them ahead of time. And then going back to original point, will they be able to do this on unstructured data too? Like, will, are we first going to invest, invest in a fully standardized ontology or will regulator or subtech supervisory technology become that smart that it can actually just look at data, interpret it, ask some basic questions and learn about it over time and prevent crisis that way? I think that that goes probably 10 years into the future if you, if you add in unstructured data. But even with the structured data that regulators get, and they get a lot of it already, they can already do a lot of advanced analytics. Oh, go ahead, yeah, Actually, uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, activities in this space. So regulators have been predicting uh, certain macroeconomic risk for some time now. Uh, some of the regulators we have worked mature markets, they do sectoral concentration and risk analysis, right? Mm based on those uh, credit risk concentration in specific sectors of the economy, they 
actually give kind of a, I won't say directive, but kind of a suggestive uh, mm. uh, guidelines to the member banks saying that this particular sector of the economy is over credit issued. So yeah. those kind of predictive models are already in place. We know regulators were using those statistical and mathematical tools to do that. What we are seeing now is the same set of regulators who are a little matured on their data analysis side of it, they're trying to integrate big data coming from unstructured sources, maybe media reports, maybe many other things, to further fine tune this data predictions on specific economic risk concentrations and uh, non-performing assets predictions kind of a thing. So yes, they will be, regulators will be more interested to use big data more and more so that they have an overarching view of the economy, how it's happening. Because till date, their data sources were always coming from the member organizations. Yep. Now they're trying to see beyond member organizations, can we get more data so that we can supplement that data to have more insights on the economic behavior. And just moving back to artificial intelligence and some of the other use cases that we have. Um, in the term, in, in the realm of uh, reg tech, data management seems to be the number one problem to solve, at least today. Do you think AI will play a key role in this, Steve? Well, uh, it already does um, in, in, several, in several ways. Um, what we can nowadays really do is, for instance, you know, looking at the quality of your data, for instance, the addresses of the counterparties and that sort of things, and matching them with fuzzy logic against some directories. So we already do that. That's really not very difficult to do. Um, what we can also very easily do is uh, to detect outliers. Artificial intelligence is extremely good at detecting outliers, and, and that's actually something that they don't really need a lot of um, uh, data to do. It, it's, it's more of, a, uh, of um, um, pattern recognition, it's like, for instance, if, I don't know, 99.9 persons of the amounts are below a certain threshold and you have one threshold that is you know 10 times that no sorry one amount that is 10 times that that, uh, that threshold it's probably worth looking at it so those type of things are already out there so this is already something that we do and and for sure uh, that that will just um, continue excellent